Hi there, so in this video then I wanted to talk about what I believe to be one of the real secret keys on the path of uh, spiritual evolution, soul evolution, um, coming more into the here now present moment, coming into a space of greater wholeness, fullness, acceptance of being, love, open-mindedness, open-heartedness, the whole deal. And it is a pretty uh, simple, straightforward concept, but not one that I can recall having ever come across in other spiritual teachings. Um, I'm not going to say that I've invented this concept by any means. I'm sure that it, that it is in, in, uh, in other uh, teachings, perhaps tantric teachings, uh, for example. But it is worth uh, repeating and exploring some more here. So. The fundamental thing to understand, in my view, is that there is absolutely nothing wrong with anything that you feel. Whether it is anger, fear, sadness, jealousy, laughter, resentment, joy, bliss, passion, ecstasy, etc. There's nothing wrong whatsoever with anything that you feel. Anything that you feel, you're feeling for a reason. It isn't random. You don't just walk into clouds of feelings around us and, and that's what causes your feelings. Who knows, that could, there could be something to that, various energies in the air, etc. But uh, for the most part, we are responsible for what we are feeling, what we are feeling within ourselves, we are feeling for a reason. It is an aspect of our consciousness. It is part of our being. And so there is nothing wrong with it. What we do um, in the world as a result of how we feel obviously uh, has a great impact on, on others and on the world in general and, and on the trajectory of our life, various uh, events that come up and, and how we respond to and deal with them as a result of our feelings at the time, it does matter. I'm not saying that it doesn't matter. And also our energy does matter um, in terms of how we affect others, etc. But there's nothing wrong with anything that you feel. And whatever you are feeling, you are feeling for a reason. So based on that um, logic, then what I would say is one of the ultimate keys to spiritual healing, to soul evolution, is to go as deeply as you possibly can into whatever that you are feeling in the present moment. To fully embrace and acknowledge it and to, to dive into it and get to know it and figure out what it's about. And that may be laughter. That may be joy and happiness. That may be an overwhelming feeling of love for everyone in the world. Or that may be anger and resentment and judgment and, and uh, sadness and fear and, and uh, various negative emotions. So the important point here is to not separate out the positive, acceptable, enjoyable feelings and sensations and emotions and say, those are good, those are allowed, I'm going to constantly strive for the positive and then the unpleasant negative stuff is bad and, uh, and not of God, and therefore I'm going to seek to move away from it and, and avoid and deny and repress all that negative unpleasant stuff. The idea is to go fully into whatever you're experiencing in this moment, and this is constantly shifting and changing, and it will always be constantly shifting and changing. That is the nature of the feeling body of our, of just the nature of our soul is that it is a constantly shifting, changing, evolving, moving, uh, transforming entity or energy. As I see it, then there is not a constant state of eternal thought bliss that, that is the state of enlightenment we're seeking in which it's ever changing and, and we are never, uh, um, you know, going into various shifting 
states of being. We will always be in various shifting states of being. There may ultimately be a, a state of peace or bliss beyond our comprehension, but even that, I believe, would be something that is, is changing and evolving. There's no end point. The concept of enlightenment implies an end point at which you've reached enlightenment and therefore that's it, you're there, you're done, you're finished, you, you, you pass the, the final level of the video game, and then what? I would hope that, that it goes on, that it keeps on going, that, that you keep evolving, that there's always more to learn, more to grow, um, etc. So, really a, a fundamental part of my path has been seeking to dive as deeply as I can into whatever I'm experiencing within. And there are many, many different techniques and, and avenues for doing this, but simply that shift of awareness and consciousness and, and intention and focus of rather than separating out, well, now I'm in a bad state of mind, so I should start thinking happy thoughts in order to change my, my uh, state of being. This to me has limited effectiveness and certainly there is some applicability to um, striving for a positive frame of mind, keeping in mind that your, your thoughts affect how you're feeling and that y if you're in a cycle of negative thinking that is going to affect your entire state of being, how you're feeling, etc. But it goes both ways. How you're thinking affects how you're feeling, and how you're feeling affects how you're thinking. And I think that a lot of the time, uh, what is going on when people are stuck in negative patterns is more a matter of negative emotional states buried in the subconscious, uh, denied and repressed emotions and feelings and it is the compression and the the uh, the locked upness, the bound, the, these these uh, denied emotional uh, parts of ourselves, an energetic aspect of our being, which is which is uh, uh, buried in the subconscious, separated from our conscious mind, and so is not part of the process, and is basically uh, calling for attention. And, and needs to be part of the overall flow of our consciousness back and forth between thoughts and emotions, between the mind and the feelings. And it is because this energy is, is bound up and locked up that it is dragging us down in an in a unpleasant, uncomfortable way that, that uh, leaves us in a negative state of, of being. And so you can focus on positive thinking all you want, but you're not addressing the real problem, which is these denied and repressed emotions. And emotional energy is very, very intense and very powerful and has a great impact on our state of mind, our state of being, whether or not we realize it. It is the, the denial of those emotions within us, the complete separation from them, that is having a great impact on our frame of mind without our realizing it, without uh, um, understanding that that energy is meant to be a part of the process of our life. And by going into those emotions and um, working with them, embracing them, diving into them, getting better acquainted with them, and making them a part of the process once again, then we free up a part of ourselves, we get in touch with another part of ourselves, and we make the subconscious more conscious, and so our life becomes more conscious as a result. Um, and so, whatever you're feeling is whatever you're feeling. You're feeling that for a reason, and so dive into it and connect with that energy, get to know it, and get that energy flowing, because that is a vital element of our life force is that that deep-rooted primal tribal um, intense powerful energy within us that wants to move and flow and uh, be in a state of 
energy in motion rather than energy denied and repressed and um, held down and limited. And so, you know, let's take anger, for example, which is definitely a highly misunderstood emotion and one that is, for the most part, discouraged and um, looked down upon and frowned upon, even in, in uh, spiritual viewpoints and religions and paths, etc., because anger oftentimes leads to conflict and leads to violence and stirs things up and causes trouble. But there are many things to legitimately be angry about in life. And there is no reason that, that, that there can't be an element of anger within our lives, within our relationships, within our interactions in such a way that it is appropriate to the situation at hand and that it gets a point across. Anger says, you're, you're crossing my boundaries, you're insulting me, um, you're repressing me, denying me, uh, I'm not going to let you get into my space like that, you know, get out of my face, mind your own business, etc. That has a place. That has a place in the process. And a big reason why people don't like anger is because they're afraid of anger. Because when somebody's angry at you, it brings up your fears about your own self-worth, fears of, uh, um, of lack and, and insecurities, and maybe there's something wrong with me, why, why is this person angry at me, I did something wrong, there must be something wrong with me, um, etc. But there's no reason why you can't be around somebody who is legitimately angry about a particular situation. I like to think of just the, um, the classic scene of, of uh, bargaining in a market. And someone quotes you a price that's just, uh, and this you know, has happened to me lots of times in India uh, and elsewhere traveling. Someone quotes you a price that's just way overinflated because they think they can get away with it because you're some tourist who doesn't know anything. Um, and uh, little would they know that I've, you know, if it's India, that I've been to India six times and spent two years there and have a pretty good idea of the prices of things. And so just a little flash of anger will drop that price down real quick, um, just showing like that you're insulted and you're like, what? There's no way I'm, that's, that's outrageous uh, or whatever. That's a situation where it's appropriate to be a little pissed off. Somebody's trying to rip you off and you're not going to put up with it. And, uh, and you let it be known. And then that lets them know where you're at. And you can get back to a uh, more reasonable exchange there. A more fair exchange in that particular situation. But that same, that same dynamic could apply to other situations where somebody is insulting you or... or uh, um, unaware of your uh, sense of self and you make it clear like I'm not going to let you get away with being a jerk or whatever so um, so anyways the point being that with anger because it is denied to a great extent then there's this whole backlog of denied repressed emotion buried into the subconscious of pretty much everybody walking the planet and so in my view one of the most essential things that you can do to really truly evolve yourself in a major way in a short period of time is to is to honor your anger anger if that's if, if you're actually um, having feelings of anger and you know negative thoughts towards people which is probably based on anger then find a way to channel that energy to to honor that energy and move it through you and clear clear that old crap out of your system so that you can get get to a more um, more clear, more present state of being. So if that's what you're struggling with, then leap into that. If, you're, if you have uh, a lot of fear around life, then get in touch with your fear and meditate in the darkness in the middle of the night in your room or in the middle of the woods, some situation that's perfectly safe but that brings up your fear 
and seek to leap into your fear and, and uh, go with that and try to get that moving. And keep in mind that the feeling body constantly changes. So people will say, you shouldn't, you shouldn't deal with anger because you're just going to create more of it. Now, this is one of my disagreements with Manichi Sudevi. That's exactly what she said in one of her videos. You know, don't pay anger any mind because once you go there, then you're just stirring it up and you're just creating more of it. And in my understanding and experience, that is not the way that it works. Anything that you are, you are feeling within yourself is going to change. So you can be feeling a lot of anger, but if you just allow yourself to be with whatever you're, with, with whatever you're feeling, once you've worked through it, your, your emotional state of being will inevitably, inevitably change because that is the, the nature of the emotional body, of the feeling body. And in my view, by following these avenues, these tunnels of sorts, within your consciousness of whatever you're feeling, then you, you reach out and you, you get in touch with that part of yourself and then you draw it into yourself. And so you're contacting different aspects of your own consciousness and getting more acquainted with them and bringing into the conscious process instead of them being buried in the subconscious. And it's like you, you, you tunnel through and you work through these different parts of yourself that have gotten separated and lost. And in the, in the process, then you bring them back within yourself and then you're working with a more whole being by embracing these, these parts of yourself, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the whole spectrum. And, and you work through and burn through that denied stuff, the unpleasant negative stuff, and then beneath that you start getting in touch with another part of yourself that is beyond emotion, beyond negative emotion, because negative emotion is not our fundamental nature of being. It is simply a transitory, energetic response to life. But when you stop that energy, then that energy gets stopped within you. When you get that energy flowing, then you release that energy from you. And so this actually gets you more in touch with the truth of who you are than having some mental conception of how you should feel, how you should act, what you should think, um, what happy people think or do but instead being fully present with whatever, whatever is within you and then finding out for yourself who you really are, um, both within these difficult negative states of being and then ultimately beyond them and finding, finding a, a deeper part of yourself um, beyond these difficult, unpleasant, challenging uh, inner states. So there's one more just quick little point that I wanted to tack on to the end of this video. It's a little bit later and uh, something came to mind. I've been uh, shooting videos for the past uh, little while and I'm getting a little bit weary of talking. So pardon me if I stumble a little bit on this one. But um, along with this idea of going as deeply into whatever you're experiencing as you can would also be peace and stillness and the silence. So I don't mean to imply that it should all be um, a matter of focusing on intense emotions and whatnot. The point is, whatever you are experiencing, go deeply into it as you can. And that includes the stillness. So if you are in a space of, of peace and quiet and stillness, by all means, go with that. Go as deeply into that as you can. That's what meditation is all about. But we aren't all stillness. We are stillness and we are movement. We are peace and we are, um, you know, clutteredness and discombobulation and, and frustration and everything else. And I think that there is a big misconception that if you stir things up, you're stirring things up permanently and you're creating a permanent uh, or at least semi-permanent problem. So, so the, the, the whole uh, argument against... Um, anger and, and uh, various difficult emotions is you're just stirring stuff up that, that's then going to get in your way and just be a problem in your life. And my view and experience has been quite different, which is that you need to stir things up in order to clear them out of your system. And so that's, that's really what I'm, what I'm speaking to uh, with this concept is 
stirring stuff up within your consciousness in order to get it moving, get it flowing, and turn that frozen energy into energy and mo- motion. And it is turning that energy into moving energy that it, that it clears it out of you. And I think ultimately you find a space of greater peace and quiet and stillness and peace of mind within in the process of stirring this stuff up. But you have to go through a phase of, of stirring up all this, this crap that's been lodged in your consciousness for who knows how long in order to get it moving, in order to get it out of your, out of your system. So, so ultimately it's about coming to a place of greater peace of mind. I love silence, I love stillness, um, but we need to recognize where we're at and be honest with ourselves and work with whatever it is that we are genuinely experiencing within ourselves. So, um, you know, ultimately we're all seeking peace of mind and uh, love and joy and, and positivity. But you have, to, you have to acknowledge what you're genuinely feeling and, and work with that. So that's the ultimate point of uh, what I was making there. So take it.